welcome back to Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Southern. This is part two of the lesson on projectiles and in this video I'm going to be looking at projection at an angle. So here we have then uh, a ball is kicked from a point O on horizontal ground with speed 24 metres per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Uh, the ball hits the side of a building at a height of 5 metres above the ground as shown in the diagram below. Uh, find the horizontal distance uh, from the point where the ball was kicked to the foot of the building. So we're being asked to find this distance along the x-axis, if you like, along the base. Uh, and we're also going to find the speed of the ball as it hits the wall. Right, OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the fact that this was um, projected with speed 24 metres per second at an angle of 30 degrees. And I'm going to think about what this means. So I'm going to draw it on the diagram like that and I'm going to label that with 24 uh, for the initial speed and then this angle here I'm going to label as 30 degrees and what that's going to enable me to do is to consider the horizontal component of the initial velocity and the vertical component of the initial velocity. So I'm just going to crack out some dash lines on the diagram here um, to show you what I mean by that. So horizontal component of velocity and vertical component of velocity. Let's just make that look vaguely more like a right angle. There we go. So we've got a right angle in here. Now, horizontally, this here is going to be 24 cos 30. And vertically, this is going to be 24 sine 30. So when I begin to consider my horizontal and my vertical components, I'm going to be using 24 cos 30 as my initial speed horizontally and 24 sine 30 as my initial um, velocity vertically. Right, so let's have a think about what's going on then. Remember what I said about splitting your page into horizontal and vertical. So we'll do horizontally on the left hand side and we'll do vertically on the right hand side and we'll start by just writing down everything that we know. So horizontally we have our initial velocity, which we call ux, is 24 cos 30. The acceleration, because the speed is constant, is zero. Um, we don't know anything about the distance travelled. Uh, we don't know anything about the time. So at the moment, that's all we've got horizontally. Uh, so vertically, we know that the initial velocity, vertically, so we call that uy, um, is 24 sine 30. And because you know your exact trig values, you're screaming at the screen, sine 30 is a half, Mr. Southern, so just write 12. OK, so the initial velocity vertically is 12. We know that the acceleration is negative 9.8 because it's due to gravity. Uh, we don't know the time, but we do know the displacement because we're looking for this point here where it's 5 metres above the starting point. So we can say that Sy is equal to 5. So I'm going to start um, looking vertically here because I've got enough information to work out the time from the displacement vertically uh, with the other information that I have. So I'm going to crack out my SUVAP, S equals UT plus half AT squared. Vertically, S is 5, U is 24 sine 30, which we now know is 12. So I'm going to write 12T uh, plus a half. A is negative 9.8 and T squared. And um, we're going to now get a quadratic that we can solve to find T. So 5 is equal to 12T minus 4.9 T squared. So 4.9 T squared minus 12T plus 5 equals 0. And we can head over to the class whiz to solve that for us. So into equation, polynomial, degree 2, A is 4.9, B is negative 12, and C is positive 5. And it's giving me two solutions for T. One is 1.9165, etc. And the other one is 0 0.5324. Let's just take a moment to consider why we've got two solutions and which one we're going to use as we proceed. 
Well, we've got two solutions because we've got this point here where the displacement is five metres, so five metres above the starting point. We've got another point here that's at the same vertical displacement, and that's why we've got two positive values of t. Now, this one happens before this one, so we're going to take the greater value of t as the one that we um, proceed with. So this is the one that we're going to use for um, subsequent calculations. Now, now that we know t, we can work horizontally to find that horizontal distance. Um, and remember what we looked at in the previous video is that to find your um, horizontal distance, uh, I should say s, your displacement in the x direction is just equal to your initial velocity multiplied by time, because that velocity is modelled as being constant, so it doesn't change. Um, so what we can just do here is we can say that it's 24 cos 30, which is our horizontal uh, velocity, multiplied by time, which we've now found to be that 1.91 there. Uh, so I stored that in my calculator. Um, so what I'm now going to do is go back into normal function and do that value multiplied by 24 cos 30, making sure you're in degrees mode. Uh, and it comes out as 39.8 through 5. Uh, so the displacement in the x direction to three significant figures is 38.9 metres. Which is this distance measured across here. Okay. Right. Um, Finding the speed of the ball as it hits the wall, I'm not going to do that bit in this video because if you watch the previous one on horizontal motion, the second, uh, the third part, I should say, of that video is the exact same maths. You need the horizontal velocity, the vertical component of velocity, crack out Pythagoras, crack out trig, job done.